are watching T Radio V, Radio in TV. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. I'm a relationship hack. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, turn that up. You already know what this is. It's Jack Herrera. A lot of people have found these guys on the internet. And I'm really disappointed about it because I want these guys to make millions off this album that was recorded 20 years ago. What? You've never heard it, I know. You guys remember John B? John B formed a group called Jack Herrera. And the music is retarded. And one of the bandmates gave me the music to play on the show. Then my little heathens found the music on the internet. Like, I got the whole album. Pay these people, man. Find an email, send them $2. $2. Something. <laughs> this is Jack Herrera for president. Let me get 30 seconds of this. What it sound like, Bobby? Oh, get get the camera on Bobby. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> if Bobby dancing, it's right. <laughs> That's the shuffle bug. That's the shuffle bug. <laughs> Did that in the 30s. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Zoe Up Morning Show is back in the building on T Radio V. That's Radio N T V, which is a weird concept, but we'll take it. <laughs> right? It's alive and popping today. As you know, we got another heater of a topic, but before I get into that, there's business to be taken care of. I got to promote small businesses, black businesses, recycling black dollars. If you're a fledgling business, you know Zoe will, will promote you for nothing. There's a sister outside. Tell that sister to come in. She just catered us. She's, she's catering us right now. She has her own little catering business, cooks incredible food. Get in here and tell these people about your business, young lady. Hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Taylor Campbell. I have a catering company called Taylor May Cuisine. Um, I specialize in Neo Soul Food. It's basically a healthier way Neo to Neo Soul Food? Yes, created it. It's a new way of eating your comfort food and more healthier way of eating. So awesome. That's what I got going on. So Follow it's me. healthy soul food. Yes, Ooh. healthy soul food. Mm. What did you bring us today? Well, uh, myself. Right. <laughs> she brought food. She brought food. I want food. I just, oh, okay. That's why you ain't getting it. You want to be fun. Bit, a little right. enchiladas, a little uh, vegetarian, uh, oh, hey. refried beef and stuff. And a side on the legs. And a side on the legs. Yeah, there So go follow Bobby. me at TaylorMade Cuisine <laughs> underscore TMC. Right. Thank you for helping us out today, Taylor. Maybe you might have to come back next Monday. Um, you know we agree. <laughs> we appreciate it. Now, We Juice, you guys saved this business. I'm telling y'all, y'all saved this man. This man was almost done. And then you guys, look at that. He got a new website and everything. Go support uh -huh. We Juice. That's O-U-I, Juice. French, We. <laughs> I think. Anyway. Great juices. The brother's a great guy. He's a trainer, personal trainer, nutritionist, and he creates these juices for the guys that, or the people who work out with him. And he brings them here for us to support, to support his business. You guys continue to do the same thing. Thank you so much for all the people who have done that already. Now, Real Men Don't Play, Bobby Glanton Smith has written a manual for manhood. Got Jim Brown, Lionel Hollins, who else? Sam, the face of boxing. Uh, most Watson. of the people that folks don't know, but they would love to know because of their body of accomplishment. Listen, if you're a single mother raising a boy and daddy ain't participating, you found your way to the one I wanted, didn't you? Oh, did I? Oh, my bad. You're evil. 
<laughs> I, I see. I got to get my bad, brother. I got to get juice security for you. It's my, cool. My bad. Zoe. We ain't even passed these out yet. You you, you can take it out on me on Friday. It's cool. Uh, yeah, you gonna put the body protector on. Take it out. On Friday. Anyway, <laughs> you guys got to get Bobby's book. I made my son read it. Like I said, if you're a, a single mother raising a boy, and you don't have a lot of strong male figures, book for this <laughs> is one of those books that you make him read. And he'll get a perspective from a village of very powerful men. I made my son read it. I'm telling you, it's not a game. Real Men Don't Play, you go to realmendontplay.com. You get it on Amazon.com, the whole nine yards. Bobby also wrote a book. You got to tell these people about this young man. Well, he's, he's 100 young, years young. 102. Speak on it, Bobby. Mm. That's Mr. Leon Gar. This man told me uh, as we were preparing the book, I said, Mr. Gar, how did you become wealthy? He said, Bobby, I made a million dollars before I could spell a million and I did it by making friends. Uh, he bought a bank when he was 76 years old and it became the first national bank owned by African Americans west of the Mississippi. He also has a construction company, an auto body shop, mm. all kind of structures that prove to us what men have done, he has done already. Are you saying what I'm saying? Let's go to work. Is Let's the name go of the to book. work is the name of the book. It's awesome. Now, Boom. you know I gotta move very quickly through this. Power in One t-shirts. Anybody who buys a copy of The Relationship Dismount right now, my latest book, The Relationship Dismount, How to Stick the Landing When Exiting a Toxic Relationship, you go to IamZoeWilliams.com. Anybody who purchases one of my books right now, you'll get some of this power in one gear. These guys have sponsored this segment, right? And I appreciate them. They sent a whole bunch of stuff, sweatshirts and T-shirts for girls and guys. Listen, anybody who buys a copy of my book today, The Relationship Dismount, How to Stick the Landing When Exiting a Toxic Relationship, <coughs> will get some of their gear. I'll send it off with the book. Uh, let's keep it pushing. Oh, this is one of my favorite companies, too. No hate on Power and One. I love their clothes, too. No hate. <laughs> I, ro I rock their shirts, too. RBGTs. <laughs> Got a lot of fly gear, but RBGTs, I'm calling you out right now. You got to step up the way Power in One Clothing did. You got to send us some stuff mm -hmm. to give away and sponsor some of our, our activities, our functions here. That's how it works. You figure deals? The I'm, barter system. Uh, we bartering right now. You got to support the Indiegogo campaign like Power in One did. We need. I'm calling you out right now. You got great shirts. Great hoodies, great products. We blew you up, too. <laughs> Let's not front on the real. Mm -hmm. I need you to come support the movement, fam. All right? Who else we got? Oh, speaking of that, Me Undies. Right? This underwear company. Pull this up. So look at, whoa. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> Me Undies is an independent business you know it's not like in macy's or something like that but high-end undergarments i mean really nice i'm wearing some now keep me nice and comfy <laughs> good for you <laughs> yeah you ain't got none no i don't exactly anyway still nice and comfy <laughs> <laughs> what they've done is you know i have an indiegogo campaign and let me just say for the 31 people who supported from last week, we got 31 donations what? since nice. last week, right? Since last Monday. Big ups to those peeps. I want to shout you out. Thank you so much. All of them got draws sent to them. <laughs> the sister <laughs> is sending draws to anybody who donates to my book fund for the next book, right? She's sending you a pair of underwear. Anybody who donates $50 or more gets two pair of underwear, his and hers. Anybody donates $100, get five pair. His and her. She's like, this is great, man. It's, it's, the, it's me undies. You guys go to the website, check them out. They got hats, hoodies, shorts, pajamas. They got all kind of stuff, man. Really nice business. And anybody who donates <clears throat> today gets shouted out on the show. So make a move right now. We got to cash mob this situation. We've only got 20 days left before this campaign is done and we are nowhere near our goal so i need you guys to move 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 oh by the way i'm wearing ramomar let's pull up the ramomar website the ramomar protected by horus egyptian styled you know 
die sublimation T. Yes, even. They too will support. They have a luxury high end. It's art, though. His stuff is not just yeah. high end yeah. fashion, it's actually art. And a lot of people complain when he says, it's going to take four to six weeks for you to get your stuff. First off, it's custom made, number one. It's tailored. Number two, this is art. This is not Macy's. This is not off the rack. I know you're not used to it. It's fine. Even the Joker wore custom made <laughs> suits. So listen, be patient with this, brother. It's going to take a minute for you to get your gear, but it's, it's really nice stuff. He, too, will be sending shirts for me to give away to you guys for donations. Five more shirts are coming from him. You've got to support The Holographic Relationship, my next book, Indiegogo Campaign. Go do it. It's going to be nuts. Shepherd Sweets. I didn't bring any crack I, I see, today. I mm. see that, Zoe. I'm just tired of y'all. <laughs> I'm tired of y'all. I get y'all. Listen, I'm doing it like a dope dealer. Dope dealer come to the hood. Give you free crack. It's free crack. Mm -hmm. First couple of times, <laughs> free crack on me. Free crack for you on me. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> and once you get hooked, then you got to pay for the crack. I'm going to the dope maker. Listen, <laughs> I done brought that candy in here mm -hmm. five, six weeks in a row. Am I lying, Bobby? Real talk. Big bins of this candy. Now that you addicted, go on out there and break bread, cousin. <laughs> Shepherds, I'm sweets. calling the dope maker. <laughs> and you gonna ask for some free candy? I see. I see how you like to destroy business. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> no, but that sister makes some of the best candy in the world. She makes sweet potato cakes. Oh my god! What the hell? A sweet potato uh, cake? It's ridiculous. Yeah, I brought some of that in here too. Everybody tripped that's out. That's ridiculous. Doctor G is addicted. Hey, can mm. I have some more candy? Can I? <laughs> I don't ever want to see Dr. a white G, dude, You never want to see G, a 70 year old Jewish man he, Addicted Dude he ate one of those whole things by himself one day <laughs> He did <laughs> By himself The candy is amazing Please continue to support Shepherd Sweets uh, Let's see Easy Boy Web These are the guys who created my website I want you guys to continue to support them as well Black owned business out of Atlanta They're getting a lot of phone calls from us A lot of business inquiries People are getting websites done by them <laughs> Right. Anything, e-commerce, social media, web, web designs, apps, they do it all. Speaking of apps, this is my final one here. Is it? Yeah. After I is beat it? you up. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> then can I throw it to you after that? You just impatient. You Aries, huh? Hey. Just impatient. Okay. Let me, let me finish. <laughs> Mind-blowing mobiles. This sister did my app. Let me tell you right now, if you have a business and you don't have an app, you're not in business. That's the new store. The store on your phone. Your phone goes everywhere. Damn near in the shower with you. They're waterproof now, mm -hmm. right? Your business is on the phone now. It's no longer I got to wait till I get home and sit down in front of a desktop. That app is now your store. You got to get with this <coughs> lady. She did my app. My app is incredible. And we've got all type of little platforms and stuff set up on it. You see my lectures, my speeches, exclusively on the app. And she will actually let you pay it off, too, so you don't have to pay all at once. So, Oh, you're working with her now, she, huh? I mean, you took my advice? I shall be. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, I like your style, Pip. <laughs> anyway, this is my homeboy, Kevin Behringer. Behringer, tell them what you do really quickly. Um, I teach people to whoop ass, as Zoe will contest. I do whoop ass. <laughs> <laughs> but no i um the summer is coming up so if you guys want to get in shape uh you want to learn how to defend yourself uh just give me a call or hit me up at 3bbootcamp.com um also um if you want if you don't have as much money just go ahead and go to the uh the home system i have the booty boxing home system at udemy.com slash booty boxing and the promo code is zo what show Awesome. Really quickly, Aries LLC, authentic, revolutionary individuals conquering every step. I don't know this, brother, but he reached out to me on Instagram, and I told him I would support him. Look, he made us custom-made yep. hats. Sure Where my hat to say Zo on it? You just had it. You had it. Is this the one? 
That's right there, there it is. Hey, Zoe on the inside. I appreciate you, brother. Y'all go check this brother out. You can find him on Facebook. Aries, A R I C E S L L C. Thank you for sending all of this stuff, brother. Appreciate you. And anybody else who wants to get promoted, you got to support that Indiegogo campaign, and I will do it. Now we're going to a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to set up today's topic. Holla! Let's do it. Watching T Radio V, Radio in TV. Everybody knows that uh, relationships, when they break down, can be extremely hurtful, uh, disappointing, frustrating, and the cocoon was uh, the concept of it was created from a poem I wrote called The Human Chrysalis in my first book, The Rebirth of Seeds. And what I explained was when you break up with someone, you need time and space to kind of flush out and process all of your feelings, all of your attachments, uh, your evaluation of yourself, uh, your evaluation of your partner, time to you know, almost take inventory of all of the things that you are accountable for. So in chapter three, you know, the cocoon is designed for you to go inside and work out these, uh, you know, particular problems or issues and, and not only work them out, but actually take ownership of them before you jump into something else with someone else. So we wanted to, to create this space of healing, this space of uh, uh, kind of internal inventory before moving into the next situation with unresolved relationship debris. You gotta let it go. There's a better day waiting for you, for you, for you. Hello, T Radio V. Hello for us. Hi, guys. My name is Steve Ranazizi. My name is Mary Elizabeth Ellis. My name is Katie Azelton. You're watching TV on the radio. Well, you're not watching it, you're listening to it because radio on TV. Hi, T Radio V. Keep that radio going inside that television set. I love T Radio V. Trust her. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. are watching T Radio V Radio in TV Ladies and gentlemen, the Zoe What Morning Show is back in the building. Dr. G is running a little late. He'll be here in a second. So it's up to me to do the relationship toolbox. So today's topic is centered around limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, negative beliefs. You could have just let that float with me, man, underneath. It's like seasoning salt. There we go. <laughs> right? And everybody in every walk of life deals with limiting beliefs, negative thoughts, right? How do you get the loser script out of your mind? How do you rewrite the loser script? How many times have you been in a relationship with the loser script? Thinking you're in a relationship with an actual person. Aw, oh, damn. We're going to fix that. How many of you have written your loser script out in the form of a business plan? Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> That's ugly. I know I'm talking. I know. I, we got to do that. That's what today's show is about. The enemy is you. It's very difficult to recognize when you're the enemy. We're going to dig into that today. We have a special guest in the building, author. We forgot to promote her book because we didn't know about it, Erica. 
You know, I like to throw people under the bus, so I don't have to take no response. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your book. What is it called, and where can people find it right now? Yes, I'm Regan Hillier. My book is called Be Your Brand. So if you go to reganhillier.com forward slash book launch, you can get it right there. It's all about how to pull out your unique message that you're born to share with the world and then how to develop, launch, and accelerate your personal brand. I love her accent, by the way. <laughs> Boom. Charlie, you good chat. Yeah, I love it. Be Your Brand. What if your brand is failure? crap <laughs> well that's that's when you need to go and do the internal work that that's we're right. talking about right yes. like that's when you need to go in and remove the beliefs and the self-sabotage and get you to a place where it's it's not crap <laughs> wow wow it's hard to see that let me talk to you about this kev because you have a brand yeah right how does one protect the integrity of the brand um by not compromising how about, how, did you go into that let's let's see where you are with that well, when, you know, as a trainer, um, you know, I have a certain way that I train, um, and I have also have a certain clientele that I like to train. Um, so for me, I'm very, I'm about peop uh, training people who with a positive attitude, who, um, who can be self-motivated, um, you know, and a lot of people will come to me and they will offer me, you know, a lot of money to do it, but if, I, if I'm not feeling your vibe, then I would just kind of say, well, I don't have the time. So you telling me you would turn down a wealthy, lazy motherfucker? I would definitely turn down a wealthy, <laughs> lazy motherfucker. I'll turn well, down. Here's two thousand dollars a month. I'll turn. I'll show up <laughs> when I get ready. <laughs> a wealthy asshole. I'll. Turn, it doesn't matter. I mean, I need to be able to to uh, to vibe with your energy or to harmonize with your energy. And if I can't do that, um, then I don't really think I can help you. If you're Bobby, a, I'm sorry. What? Bobby, what motivates you? Um. Legacy. Uh, oh, I like I, this. I, I've lived long enough to appreciate the evolution and the arc of my life, and so my legacy is the most important thing to me because the people that came before me uh, laid down indelible footprints, and then as I grew older and had to step into that elder status, I realized that I don't want to waste any more of my life doing things that will not be, I think, sustainable beyond my lifetime. So it's important for me to share and teach what I've learned about being a man as I evolve more so into one because mm -hmm. it's an ongoing process. So legacy is most important. Legacy is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Regan, what are some common self-sabotaging behaviors that a lot of people maybe are unaware of, unconscious of, but that they're, do that they're doing? What are some? Yeah, look, there's so many and they show up through all areas of life regardless of where you're at. I think there's one core thing that so many people are unaware of when you're moving towards a goal and, and you get so close to achieving that goal and then all of a sudden you sabotage it in some way. You know, yeah. you, you take some sort of action which destroys the relationship or you're so close to that health goal and then you blow out and you eat all the food you weren't meant to. And what we need to understand is that our brains can't see what's on the other side of that goal. So we process it as fear and mm. we process it as unknown. And we're wired to keep ourselves safe. So if we can't condition to what's on that other side, oh, we literally go, okay, well, I'm just going to do whatever it takes to ruin this. No, so. that's big. She just said something very powerful. We're <coughs> wired to seek what's safe. We're not even going to talk about relationships. This is what, to, to me, this is what gets women in trouble. You guys are always trying to date the safety net. <laughs> and you wind up with the beta male. Because yep. you're trying to date the safety net. Security. Say more <laughs> about that, how these limiting beliefs can put you in a safe situation, mm -hmm. which, you know, you can question, you know, the longevity of that safety ness, right? That safety net or whatever. But how do women make bad decisions in the pursuit of safety? Mm. Oh, this is good. Go, go, eat. Just go ahead. Yeah, right yeah look, I, I think it's <laughs> massive. I think it's absolutely massive, and I see it in a lot of women, and, and they are, you know, unconsciously looking for that safety. Mm. But then what happens is that they find it, but they're not necessarily in alignment with what they actually want in a relationship. Mm. So all of a sudden, they do anything they can to destroy it, ultimately. And then the poor guy on the other side is like, what's going on, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> you know, he's at the effect of all this. So I think it's a, a huge challenge. 
and and one that so many women are completely unaware of that's actually going right. on. Or the guy is like, good, she's fucked up. I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> All I got to do is do this. Right? Because right. there are guys out there that are predatory. They're taking advantage. They take yep. advantage. Oh, she's broken. Great. Yep. This is a shortcut. <laughs> right? Bobby? Well, you know, she, she, she brought up something that um, as I've um, <clears throat> began to appreciate some of the influences in my life, and you mentioned Jim Brown earlier, and the American program, and, uh, and we teach people in our curriculum, eliminate the negative, establish the facts, and choose your best option. And because of the fear component, we confuse our emotional desires with the facts. And you said something earlier yeah, about what yeah. the problem really is. Mm -hmm. We'll look around the world and see everybody's out of place except us mm. until we finally accept the fact that, you know, this is actually my life. And what's going right or wrong in my life is completely up to me once I take control of my own life and the responsibility that come with that. None of us are perfect. Right. We make mistakes and we'll continue to make those mistakes until we accept the fact that nothing's going to get better until I do. Wow. Mm. I, I can smoke know. a bag of that, Bobby. That's yeah. why you're here. Old wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Go ahead, Kevin. Well, you know, uh, like as a trainer, you know, what I, the most thing that I see is defeatist attitudes where you know, before they even perform. You talking about me? First off, don't don't Did put I say my you? business out in the you street. You putting your own self out there. No, it's already. No, it's <laughs> you putting your damn self out no, there. No, it's, it's already uh, on tape. It is on tape. It's, it's on, on tape, video. Man. Tape is man. You, you got, got two more weeks. <laughs> you got two more yeah, weeks of so. suspension for the <laughs> pitiful performance you put <laughs> on two weeks ago. The, one of the first things well, before they even perform an exercise, they'll say, "Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't lift that." And then I'll give them the weight, and then they'll just they'll just go. I'm like, "See, why did you already defeat yourself before you started it?" So most people are conditioned to have that defeatist uh, mentality. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things, um, when I first met Zoe, um, the book, the, actually the very first book I bought, after the first class I was with him in, in uh, Pasadena, we went to a bookstore, and I bought a book called The Kabbalion. Excellent book. Great, my, that's my Bible. And it's, uh, Don't play yourself. Got to get that book. Got to get that book. And it, it talks about the seven principles or the seven laws of the universe. And uh, the very first law in the book is the universe is mental. So that you create, basically, you create your own reality. Oh, we getting deep now. And, Let's go. Um, so uh, <laughs> even so, even before that, before I hooked, before I got into that, I used to live with a guy um, who was this, who was big on positivity. And we went to a, we were having a party one day, and we went to, we were getting some stuff for the party. We went to three places they didn't have it. So the fourth place, we went in there, and he walked down an aisle. We separated. And then I saw him down an aisle, and he was just doing this in the middle of the aisle. And Who so are you I'm standing about? there. Do I know this dude? No, nah, he's a homie from high school. So okay. he was just doing this. This is going and weird. Packing, and I'm like, I'm standing at the beginning of the aisle. I'm looking at him like, what the fuck is he doing? And so then he did this, and then he said, and then he swallowed. I'm saying, man, what the fuck are you doing? Was it Shabadoo? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> he said, I was a positive energy ball. I'm like, what the fuck is a positive energy ball? He's like, I eat a positive energy ball, so then I start to think positively, and things will happen positively. I'm like, this is, I was totally foreign to the thinking. So though he did that, and literally right after, we found everything. We found shit on sale. Every, I mean, so that introduced me to positive thinking. So after that, I started to try it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it fails. But the more and more you get into that thinking, the more and more you solidify that type of thought, and it things that you think that shouldn't happen, they will just automatically just start to happen for you. But there are a lot of people who think this is charlatan talk. It, it, it's and, not. Let's just, and let's just really get into it. There are a lot of people who practice positive thinking, and this shit simply doesn't work. But it's not well, positive I, thinking. But hold on, Pam. <laughs> I want to know why doesn't it work. Why, when people are very positive, when people pray for things, and people meditate on things, and it doesn't happen, the biggest question is, how come it didn't happen? Regan? <laughs> yeah, I think it's massive. And you're right. There's so many people that are so focused on being positive, yet they're not living the life that they actually desire. Mm. So I believe that there's internal mindset blocks and limits going on in that case. They're saying one thing. They're saying, this is how I want it to roll out. Mm -hmm. But there's still limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, mm -hmm. everything we're talking on now sitting in there unconsciously. Uh -oh. And what I really encourage people to do, exactly like you were saying, around 
you know, bringing it into reality is starting to write your existence into reality. Mm -hmm. Writing as if it's already happened. Mm -hmm. You know, I am so happy and grateful that I have received Mm -hmm. this amount of money or this job interview or this kind of partner or whatever it is. Wait, 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 wait. This is good. This is good. This is good. You're saying, listen to what, write in past tense. Yeah, so write as if you've already received it. That's big. Yeah, that's right. one of the laws of Kabbalion. I can smoke that. And one of the laws of Kabbalion. Bobby, come in here and tear this bullshit down. Go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even Man. about uh, uh, deconstruction or reconstruction. Um, what I found interesting about the journey of life is, first thing you do is, I've done, right and wrong, is visualize what it is I'm doing. And then when it's wrong, I, w- you, I want to turn that screen off, but it's too late. I, it's already played. And now I got to recover from that. But uh, a brother taught me a long time ago, a real brilliant brother who's read over 10,000 books. He says the books you read and the people you meet, they're, they're interrelated. Because the more knowledgeable you are, the less you are afraid of social and human interaction. He also said that which you seek purely in your heart is also seeking you. Mm-hmm. And the key to that is, just like you said earlier, it's one thing to say something, but if you really, really, really believe it, then it's, it's like a magnetic force. But I think you're, you're attracted to that. I, I, she she says something that that makes me think this way. It goes. Are you familiar with Krishnamurti? No. Jiddu Krishnamurti. Well, he has a book called Education and the Significance of Life. Go get it. Don't play yourself. Education and the Significance of Life. Very powerful book. In that book, he said a teacher is the most valuable thing a society can have. A teacher. He says, but just like a mom, if that teacher does not reconcile their inner darkness and they get in front of students, they'll be teaching them more than just mathematics. Mm -hmm. Their unresolved hurt, malice, and anger, and all of that stuff will transfer to the student. So he's saying, yes, they're valuable, but they can also be dangerous until they reconcile with themselves. And one of his famous statements was, the enemy is you in every situation. Let me tell you how I got my son ready for basketball. Because I would always put my flaws on front street for him in the form of a textbook and say, you see this bullshit in me? This is in you too. You're my boy. You're raised in my environment. You're pattering yourself after me. You're modeling yourself after how I speak, how I walk, how I handle situations. You're modeling all of this. So you're on cruise control not understanding that you're being formulated by my weaknesses. So let me put my weaknesses on Front Street. That was number one. Number two, I made him study NLP. In the 10th grade, he would put on, I say, new. No, I want you to download a, perf- a sports performance mind-centered NLP that will help you zone in. Because you'll find a lot of sports figures, whether it's Tiger, whether it's Jordan, whether it was Kobe, they all meditated. They all went into a zone, into a space to prepare themselves to be able to deal with the difficult moment. Life has got most people on the hamster wheel and it's almost impossible for them to separate and get into a space of centered, calmness, direct focus. It's hard for people to do that. It's, fuck, I gotta get to work. And I gotta get a donut and then they get fat and then they go to the cubicle and then they stress, then they come home, they yell, all types of shit is going on. And it's hard for people to get some space and just go, let me quiet it down. This is why that positive thinking don't always work because they're using it as an escape mechanism as opposed to a lifestyle. Dr. G, speak on self-sabotage. Welcome to the show. Whitey is late. Well, I'm not alone, though. That's cool. (laughs) But she was on time. I was on time. (laughs) Well, that's why self-defeating behavior. What do you want? Whitey Locks is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Mark Goulston, speak on it. Uh, So, um... One of the reasons that we get, we have self-defeating behavior is because things happen and we react to them and we make them worse. So all our self-defeating behaviors make us feel better for the moment 
And then what happens is we screw up our credibility and we make things worse. So mm -hmm. I, I've written a couple of books. Uh, one you may have plugged, Get Out of Your Own Way. Excellent. Uh, That's my favorite. Yeah, and this, this, is, this is 20 years old, and it's still in the top five at Amazon for self-help books. But uh, like a lot of the chapters, uh, procrastinating, uh, getting angry to make things worse, uh, holding a grudge, all of those things make you feel better for the moment, mm. but they screw up your life. Mm. So one of the things uh, that uh, when I'm coaching people that I have them do, and, and, and I'm a great believer, uh, I'm not a great believer in self-talk because down deep, I may be different, down deep I'm a we, I'm not an I. Right. And so I think of the uh, mentors, mentors, all of whom have died, but all of whom love me uh, for some strange reason. Uh, but <laughs> when it, when I'm, whenever I'm about to do something stupid or I've done something stupid, I picture any of them and uh, I can just, right now I can just feel them smiling at me mm -hmm. and they and they talk me, you know, from DEF CON 1 to DEF CON 4 and, one of the, and some of the ways they do that, uh, and it's in my books and it's in this book, Talking to Crazy, uh, is... Talking to Crazy. And, and this is great also to use with yourself and with your kids is when someone is really ticked off and before they're about to do something, say to you, where do you feel it physically? Because almost everybody feels it physically somewhere. Mm. I feel tightness in my chest. I feel, you know, headache. The neck. Yeah, and you need. And, and, and what happens is they succeed in the first step. So everyone gets that right. And then you could. And then the next thing that's important is to say, um, attach an emotion to it. What do you mean? Angry, scared, frustrated. But attach a, mo a, a name to it because there's research that shows that when you attach the right name to your feeling, it lessens uh, amygdala activation and it lowers the agitation in your middle brain. And then the next thing, so it's so, so the first thing is your physical sensation. Second thing is your emotional, give it a word. The third thing is what's your impulse awareness? What does it make you want to do? Well, it makes me want to do such and such. And then after that, you can say, what will happen if you do that? Well, I'll feel great but I'll lose my job. I'll feel great if I tell my boss off, but then if I need him or her for reference, I'm not gonna be able to get one. Right. And so it, it's a way of walking you up from your emotional and fight or flight brain into thinking more clearly. And mm -hmm. then, the, then there's other steps. And You're you know, trying to catch yeah, up yeah. Uh, for yeah. being late. You're trying to speak. Yeah, Just okay, that's uh, enough. Okay. All the words you can for being late. It's cool. There you go. Okay. It's fine. Anyway. You, you're, you're caught up. It's good. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Dr. Mark Why'd Wilson. you ask me I to speak if you didn't want to hear? <laughs> no, I always want to hear what you got to say. We just got to take a break. But before we go to break, let me say this. 17 minutes ago, Damian E. Giles Sr. dropped $25. We're going to send right. some draws out to you, pimp. Jeremiah Thompson, 24 minutes ago. Jeremiah Thomas, 24 minutes ago, sent $10. Ain't no draws on that end. <laughs> but it's hella thanks. Good looking, man. <laughs> Word up. You know what I mean? Straight up. Uh, Rico Clothing, 26 minutes ago, dropped $100. Mm. We're going to send out five pair of draws to you, man. You want some draws for your girl? We got somebody that's going to reach out to you and send you an email and ask you what colors, what size, all of that. Robert Overstreet, longtime fan of the show, 27 minutes ago, dropped $50. You're going to get some draws too, pimp. Anybody who wants, you know, Power in One clothing or whatever, please go to imzowilliams.com, purchase a copy of the Relationship Dismount, and continue supporting the Holographic Relationship Book Drive. Get at us right now. Donations are being accepted, and shout outs are coming through. We'll be back at 2.2 with the rest of the Zoe Wet Morning Show. Holla! You are watching T-Radio V. Radio in TV. I'm Zoe Williams. And I'm Dr. Mark Goulston. I'm Jeff Brown. And we make up the Zoe What Morning Show. You can find us here on TRadioV.com every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I make you think. He makes you laugh. And if I get a chance, I'll help you change. Or make you cry with his attempts at humor. Radio in TV. Can you relate? We'll make it happen. Look at Jeff. What you doing? Were you mumbling to yourself? <laughs> hey, back there mumbling. To them. To them. <laughs> Yo, what's up? This is your boy Kyle Mass, and you're checking out T Radio V. T Radio V. T Radio V. Hello, T Radio V. Love you guys. Radio V TV. Radio V TV. Oh. 
Hi, I'm Plastic Martyr and I've got a new show called Just Like You on T Radio B. It's an inside look into my Hollywood life where I give you a sneak peek into a world of beauty, fashion, and fame. Illusions will be shattered. And of course, there's a little sex hugs and rock and roll. Be sure to check it out Wednesdays at 11, only on T Radio B. I'm Bob Nelbandian, and be sure to watch my show, Inside Metal, which airs live every Tuesday from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here on T-Radio V. I'm going to be bringing in the greatest heavy metal artist live right here in the studio. Once again, every week at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Tuesday right here at T-RadioV.com, radio in TV. watching T Radio V Radio in TV <laughs> Hey man I love this music turn that up Just turn it up I need 30 seconds That Jack Herrera is just silly Oh, yeah. Hey, listen. We're talking about limiting beliefs. We're talking about limiting limiting beliefs, self-sabotage. Dr. G, you know we on the air. Doc, Doc just is wild right now. <laughs> he just comes in on G status like, hey, I'm networking on the air. I'm, I'm just excited to be with another white person. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm just out here talking right now. <laughs> We done, we done blacken <laughs> Doc G up way too much. Doc used to be, what, excuse me, is my turn to talk? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Now you, well, wait a minute. I got something to say. <laughs> Doc G, you done got a little black, huh? I like it. Once you go, once you go black. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I want to do. Because a lot of people learn by example. Like words and concepts and symbols. People be like, what the fuck is that? Right? A lot of times. Sometimes you gotta show by example. You gotta lead by example, right? With that said, I'm gonna do a round robin around the table where we call out, where we, or we list, you know, our top three most self destructive beliefs about ourselves. Kevin, who, well, no, Kevin, would you tell them your top three? This is gonna be great. About me? About you. Your okay. top three. If you're perfect, lie. I don't have any. Well, perfect means balanced. And so I do strive to be that every day. So. <laughs> well, if you're striving, you ain't perfect, huh? <laughs> it it doesn't mean flawless. <laughs> <laughs> That's an everyday struggle. But um, Your top I don't, three limiting beliefs. I don't have any about myself. I believe I can do anything. So that's. And that's my business is to promote, is to push that on everybody else. You can do anything that you want. I believe that, too. Okay, then so if you do believe, believe that, then there's no self-limiting beliefs about yourself. But I believe everybody <laughs> has challenges. I believe everybody has internal challenges that are there to help you get to your maximum state, whether uh, Abraham Maslow's, you know, the top of the pyramid, self-actualization, or whether it's Paramahansa Yogananda, self-realization, <laughs> right, or the Hindu... Samadhi, you know, bliss or whatever. There is a journey and an internal struggle to get there. And that struggle, let me just say this, because a lot of people don't want to, they don't like struggle. Struggle is actually useful. It's there yeah, right. to get That's, you there. Absolutely. What are your three most limiting beliefs about yourself? Now, you tell the truth. Zero. I have no limiting beliefs about myself. Ladies and gentlemen. Zero. <laughs> I always thought unicorns were women. I am limited by nothing. This is the first male unicorn. Dude, I've been doing this for 20 years. If I had those beliefs, those were 15 years ago. That's done. I love it. I lo Bobby, it's Bobby really, 62 years old. He's going to tell you how it is. It's, it's really come down to one major uh, challenge, and that was not putting other people above me I, I, I came up in the south where it was always going through the back door and sucking class this sucking class that and it was hard not to buy into that sense of inferiority and so as a result 
I spent a long time working on other folks' stuff more than I'd work on my own stuff. And I thought that was being selfless, but in fact, it was debilitating because mm. I was actually better at some things than other people were, and I would defer to them. Mm. And uh, it took me a long time and going through the uh, American Life Management Skills curriculum to realize that I is not necessarily narcissistic because at the end of the day, I came in this world by myself and I'm going <laughs> to leave out of here by myself. So whatever I do, I had to first and foremost take responsibility for my actions and my beliefs. And so the turning point in my life was accepting the fact that up or down, it's on me first and foremost. I can smoke a bag of that. Dr. G, he about to give us some good shit. Let's hear it. Well, chapter two and Get Out you're of Your Own to, Way go your is getting involved with the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> You're happy Jeff isn't here. You know Jeff was shut oh, down yeah, all he, your oh comedy attempts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Well, well, here's what, and, and, and I'll bet she can help me, even though I, I think I'm helpless uh, or hopeless. Um, I don't think I'll ever know inner peace. Mm. And, and, so, and the reason for that is because uh, I always feel that uh, uh, whatever I do is not good enough. Mm. And it's interesting. I mean, I, my parents uh, both passed away, and my dad. I, and I'm trying to figure this out because my dad was kind of a numbers guy. He didn't run numbers. He was, you know, accountant guy. Uh, he may have run numbers, but uh, uh, may have had a touch of a little bit of Asperger's or something. And so when you get a 98, he'd say, uh, uh, "What did he say? Uh, uh, you can do better." And if you're, you know, if you're a numbers person, a 98 isn't 100. So I internalize you can do better is that's not good. That's mm -hmm. crap. Hmm. And if he had, s and I'm saying this to parents out there, if you say you can do better, if my dad had said you can do even better, it would have made a world of difference. Hmm. Because hmm. when I looked at it, you know, years later after he died, he was just he was just being an accountant. A 98 can always be a hundred. He's a bean counter. Yeah, yeah. For, so from his point of view, it wasn't a hundred, but I internalized you can do better, meaning it ain't good enough. It'll never be good hmm. enough. Hmm. And so I, I, I just share that with parents when you're trying to give people, your kids, positive uh, criticism. Say you can do even better because they may internalize wanting that, you know, that positive thing that what you're doing, you know, your B plus is much better than the D you had. Mm. You know, you, you, you want that appreciation. Mm -hmm. And if you need that, and I think I must have needed it. Wow. But, mm. but I still can't get rid of it. So that's why I don't think I'll ever... Uh, no real, real peace. It's fine. You're not going to be shit anyway. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Regan. <laughs> you can do even better. You can, you can do even better with this. Right, but I, I need to do a shout out though. Did I, did I, did I do the shout out to? Go ahead. To do your shout out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Augusta, Georgia. A friend of mine, the former mayor, ran for three terms and uh, left with a 73 percent approval rating. He tomorrow is this James. This is for James Brown. James Brown. You did birthday do this. Bash. You know that, right? But go ahead. Finish. Oh, did I do it already? Yeah. Go ahead. No, it did. Well, my self-defeating behavior. You're <laughs> fucking with me. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if I missed something. Look, when you have ADD flirting with Alzheimer's and you get involved with the wrong people, what do you want from me? Okay, go to Augusta. <laughs> no, tell us, though. Uh, What's happening at Augusta? They want to know. Did I say that? No, so you, you didn't had, say no, it. You didn't okay. say something dropped? He's missing. You're being yeah. gaslit. Yes, there you go. There you go. Uh, so uh, <laughs> no, in Augusta, Georgia tomorrow, James Brown's birthday. James Brown from Augusta. I feel good. <laughs> and, and so they're doing a great birthday bash, and they're going to have uh, Sharon Jones and Ivan Neville, Aaron Neville's kid, and they're going to kind of whoop it up because James Brown, last years of his life, he was really talking up Augusta, Georgia. He was proud to be there, mm -hmm. and they had mixed feelings about him earlier, but what the, I was just speaking to the former mayor on the way here, and he said hopefully the younger generation will forget some of the negative things that he turned off people, and we'll just be proud that he was part of us, and we're going to celebrate that tomorrow. So if you're near Augusta, Georgia, go visit it. Thanks for the commercial. Uh, Regan, your top three debilitating, negative, self-sabotaging beliefs about yourself. Yeah. Well, let me say this first. Is, you know, I truly believe that no matter what level you're functioning through at life, everyone has blocks and limits. And if you didn't have blocks and limits, then you'd have everything you desire. Thank right? you. That's, because that's we for you, punk. It. What if I do? Mm. <laughs> well, I okay, maybe you don't. <laughs> right. I'm with you. We right here. Let's go. So you created this internally. This old perfect right? motherfucker right here, but let's go. Right, and if you're in control <laughs> of creating your reality internally, then if there was nothing holding you back, then you'd have it all, basically. Right. Um, look, there's there's been many for me, and there's still many that pop up, and 
you know, I do the work on them daily, to be honest. And I move through them fast and that's with practice. I think one of my biggest things that's limited me has, I guess, really giving myself permission to step into my message. And for years, I kind of dealt it down a little bit, thinking, oh, you know, I'm young or, you know, I should I should not shine as much so that I can fit in or I might I might stand out too much if I truly step into my calling and my purpose and my message. So I think that was one of the biggest things that really shifted for me. Wow. I, I like it. Let me, let me say something. Uh-uh. You, <laughs> you, my you turn. keep going into the, Ain't it my the turn? perfect thing because I'm, I just want to explain because you it's keep trying turn. to smash me. You, with you don't need to, you you, don't you need to explain to nothing. Smash. Yeah. <laughs> now listen, Go ahead, man. Kevin, explain it. The only thing that limits you is you. So how, how she says if you, if you had no blockages, you would have everything you want. That depends on what your desire is and when you want that. If I need something, if I want it, I can go get it. There's nothing that would limit me from going to get it. Now, do I want everything all at once? That's not, that's not the case, or that's not the case for most people. However, what limits you from getting what you want or from doing whatever you want is pretty much information. You can do anything you want. You just need to find out the way how to do it. And so for me, that's the, that's the understanding I have. If I want something, I'll find out the information on how to do it, and I do it. I get it done. I get it done. <laughs> that's, just how it, that's just how it is. I'm not sold on your perfection. You ain't got to be sold. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got two for me. Two. One is impulse control. I've had to deal with this a long time. Maybe it's how I was raised, where I was raised. Bobby, you know, I was from Alton Park, Chattanooga. Yeah, right. That's where I was born, man. Yeah, born. Hollywood. <laughs> Bobby, don't make me crawl over the <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you this impulse control right you now. You lift back. <laughs> <laughs> no, one is impulse control. So, you know, it's always I've always been a hothead. You know, Bobby had to talk me down last week. I was about to... Go off on some people that was late. <laughs> Bobby's like, oh, oh, they're here now. It's okay. We we going in. But, I, you know, impulse control has always been an issue. And I think I'm, a, I'm better now than I was before. Like, if you knew me when I was younger, like, mm. friends. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like, my, my close friends are like, yeah, you, yeah, okay. <laughs> you did good for yourself. <laughs> you know? Even 20 years ago. It, yes. So <laughs> impulse control has always been an issue. Anger, you know, that temper, <laughs> all of that. But then one that's manifesting itself, like in the last 10, 15 years, is I'm very obstinate, inflexible in a lot of ways. Like, I had a relationship end because I wouldn't let you know, a woman be a woman. I wouldn't let her help me. I wouldn't let her be- pour into me. You know, when women believe in what you do, they tend to pour into what you do. Mm-hmm. They tend to get behind That's what right. you do, and st- they're like your advocate. Right. They're they're putting their energy, their spirit, all that's down with you. That's mm. right. Their sex, and I prevented her from doing that. Mm. You know, I, I was like, I was just inflexible. I would not allow her to pour into me. Mm. And it was in that relationship that inflexibility manifested itself as one of my greater blockages, one mm. of my greater challenges. Are these limiting beliefs about yourself or traits that you wish to change, though? These are beliefs and traits because the belief on my end is I got it. God damn it. Don't, don't do <laughs> shit. I got it. Let me do it. That's mm. always been me. Let mm. me do it. Uh, and then the trait is it will connect to the impulse control. Like, you're really pushing yourself into my space right now. Let me do it. And I'll pop off on you. Mm. If you, you know, try too hard to participate. Mm. These are some of my weaknesses. I don't have a fucking problem talking about it. My number three would have been honesty until maybe four or five, maybe six years ago that I had to just, like, really look like, you're a fucking liar, dude. Mm. And once I owned it and was able to break down lying as a defense mechanism, because I had to understand it. We had a guy on our show when we did the foxhole, the voice of reason on Jamie Foxx's foxhole. We had a guy named Livingstone. He's a, a, a Ph.D. professor on the East Coast, I think Connecticut or something. And he did a book about the nature of lying and how ubiquitous lying is for people. 
And once I read his book and understood what he was teaching, I was able to start to break down some of that. Lying is just about self-defense. Mm. A kid is going to lie to defend that ass from that belt. He's not lying because he's somehow malicious. He's lying to protect himself, right? Or to protect others' feelings. Uh, or to protect, uh, well, that too. But he explained how ubiquitous lying was and what its basis was in, and that is in self-protection. So, Bobby? I just got to chime in on this because uh, we met each other about eight or nine years ago, I guess it was. Was it eight or nine years? It's been a long time. And for you to mention one of your challenges, I guess I, I kind of connected to that with you early on because you was in that stage of flushing that out where, you know, that shifty side of Zoe uh, was still very prevalent, prevalent enough that I was like, Wait a minute, this cat Bobby, is charming. Let me, let, let, me, let me finish, let me finish, man. Because when I first met you, so I Bobby. said, you know what? He got another side because you were so endearing to everybody. I said, it's some, it's some slick shit going on. No, I am <laughs> endearing. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think it's slick. See, slick is you. Oh! <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he's smooth. I'm not he's smooth. smooth. It's not <laughs> slick. You know, you know, I, me, man. I, 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 am in, I am endearing. You but, slick too, but I'm man. not. I'm not slick. You don't even know it, man. I'm you, trying to tell you, Bobby. You slick as our shit, Bobby. Man. When he get drunk, oh man, Bobby like that nigga right there. He fucking with Jeremy Fox and him. <laughs> I don't fuck with him because he fuck with Jeremy Fox and him. Then when I talked to Bobby, Bobby was like, "Oh, that's a real dude. No, he look. good." See that now he gonna put it on that. Ain't that what you did? <laughs> no, I, I told you that stone sober. I said, man, you know what? You over there in that other corner, <laughs> and then you over here and Corey. I wasn't in Corey any was, corner. Man, look. I it, was doing a radio show. On, it was on whose network? Sober. On Jamie Foxx's network. Case closed. What does that mean? See, this is this. You is was in of, house, man. Hold on. This you is was one in of house. You, this is one of your little character flaws right here. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Bobby's an old fill in the blanks ass motherfucker. No. He ain't got all the information. No. I was just doing a radio show. No, no. I got a shot to do a radio show, and I just did it. Yeah. Then you came over, and you was like, "Okay, you know, what, did, we wait, know what was going on hold back on, Bobby, then." Right? I was there before you got there. I know it. And, and you know how point. I got there? You know how I got there? Tell me, man. This is this is how I got there. Huh? Me and Corey are doing a show together. On Speedy's Comedy Corner. Me and Corey are going at each other every week, bagging, signifying, okay, talking crazy. Okay. But Corey recognized right then, he said, this dude is not what you think he is in terms of his presentation. According to the African American community, there's a lot of stereotypes that we impose on ourselves. True that. Oh, he light skinned, so he's soft. <laughs> yeah. Malcolm was light skinned, wasn't soft. Right. Right? Oh, he got green eyes, so he's a pretty boy. Right, or, right. All these, <laughs> right, I might be right. able to whoop his ass because he's light-skinned with green eyes. And he get beat up, he'd be like, oh, shit, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so Corey uh, was trying to figure it out. He was like, okay, he hella articulate. Yeah. He real smart. He's yeah. using really big words. But underneath, I can sense he will fight a dude. He will whoop somebody's ass. Okay. I can see the street in him. So Corey and I connected on that level, and Corey was like, man, you should come do my show. And I was like, yeah, you should come do mine. Right. And then we, well, once we started doing each other's show, we started seeing that there was a similarity yeah. in each other. Yeah. It wasn't, oh, he's slick. <laughs> See, Bobby, oh, that's how he do. That nigga slick right now. <laughs> he's slicker than owl shit. <laughs> slicker than owl shit. Only a man from the 30s. <laughs> from, the, from the 30s. <laughs> slicker than owl. I don't oh, know the consistency the of owl shit, but Bobby does. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Burns, you had a point. <laughs> Come on, bring it back. <laughs> Dr. G? Yeah, uh, back in, but you are slick. You just hit me in the throat. I, right? I didn't I, turn yeah. it over to Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. G. I got a question to ask all three of you, maybe all four of you. Um, do you think being compassionate is enabling other people? Wow. And I'll tell you why, because maybe I have to adjust things, because I used to be a suicide specialist. And so, and, and I saw people who were all multiple attempters, n none of them killed themselves afterwards. But I think what was effective is I don't think I was feeling sorry for them. I think I wasn't judging them. I mean, when I could understand why they needed to get rid of the pain, I didn't judge them. They gave up their suicidality. And I, and I, and I think it was being compassionate, but maybe compassion is just enabling 
people it's reserved for people with mental illness that they need the compassion whereas everybody else you got to tell them what to do to overcome it so so i'm really asking you honestly do you think do you think compassion is enabling other people and should be reserved for the people <coughs> that just just don't have it can't can't function bobby and then yeah, regan i'm gonna take off on it if you're truly compassionate it's not enabling if you're truly compassionate. Now, if you're empathizing with somebody, then it might turn into enabling. And the distinction is this. I've done a lot of things I thought were helpful to people and I got shitted on. And then I had to play the tape back and figure out, okay, same set of circumstances, would I do that again? As long as I did it in the right space in my heart, yes, I would. But if I was doing it being empathetic, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't travel that road again. So as long as you're doing what you really feel is right in your <coughs> heart, then you got to ride with it. Mm. Regan? Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I think there's a middle ground to it, and I think it comes back to if you're being compassionate, what's your intention behind your behavior? Because if your intention is to just go, oh, you'll be okay, I totally understand where you're at, that's not actually helping well, them that's, that's necessarily. Pity. That's not compassion. That's pity. That's right. what I was going to say, like. Right, versus appearing compassionate and then saying, you know, I understand where you're at, but here's what you need to do and helping lead them forward. You know, so I, I think it comes down to your intention as to whether your intention is to actually help and understand or or just to give them some sympathy, you know? Hmm. Hmm. Well, th this will set you all, you guys, back. Uh, one, you know, one of the reasons I'm on this show is because I'm compassionate to y'all. <laughs> and the reason being, <laughs> no, and the reason being is is uh, my, my driving passion is to take talented, hardworking uh, people who haven't had their shot and give it to them. So people that have been marginalized, pushed away, thrown away, it's just part of who I am. Part of it is because I was marginalized mm -hmm. and someone stepped in and kind of saved me probably in all kinds of ways. So I am compelled when I see hardworking people. I mean, this shows, this shows Great. It should be much more successful. Y'all should be making money off this show. You gonna use y'all again? It's cool. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> you just, you're anyway. just one of us now, right? Y'all. No, that's off limits. You. No, I don't know if that's compassion. Just like the N word, you can't say y'all. <laughs> but go ahead. Finish. <laughs> that wasn't very compassionate. <laughs> so, so I don't know if that's compassion or championing. I, I don't know what to call that. But it's but but you know. But I feel like. You know, talented people who are just thrown away. It, it, it's just not right. Wow. Listen, we got to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will f finish this conversation. <laughs> mm. T Radio V, so what? Morning. Oh. I'm trying to cool out to the 70s vibe. That's when the shorty stepped up to me up from the side. You are watching T Radio V, radio in TV. I'm Laura Somoza. I'm Sterling Gardner. And we are Between the Sheets every Monday here, 3 p.m., tradiov.com. T Radio V. That's right. It's T Radio V, radio in TV. <laughs> what is that face? <laughs> she wants to see our hands. That's radio in TV. Wah, 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 wah. We're not a couple. <laughs> Hi, kids. Billy and Francesca here for my brand new show at T Radio V Advice from an Idiot. Every Thursday from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. So please call in and get some advice from someone who knows absolutely nothing about everything. Hey, my fellow thoughters out there, I'm Charles Shaughnessy. Check out my new show, Here's a Thought, with Charles Shaughnessy, August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. Now, you know I have a lot to say, but I want to hear what you have to say. So tune in, grab your phones, call me, tweet me, email me in the studio, and let's get this conversation going. Here's a thought, starting August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. That's radio... In TV. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jeff is not here today, so uh, I'm going to sit in that chair for him. Um, there's no such thing as a superman or woman. And I'm tying that to the situation with Prince and all of the varying opinions people are having now about his death. Well, first of all, arguably the greatest musician in my lifetime and possibly ever. In terms of his accomplishment, he mastered more instruments than anybody that I know of. And he used that talent to such a degree that there's no question about his place in the upper echelon of the greatest ever. Now <laughs> let's look at Prince, the human being. For over 40 years, he wore high heel shoes. And he <laughs> ended up, and it's not a criticism, it's just a consequence to that. Because by wearing those, those heels, he created some, some structural problems that had his back hurting constantly, as well as his hips. It's been widely reported he needed to have double hip replacement surgery because he's a human being. Now, the entertainer, iconic figure. Human being, them heels and, and, and all of the physical exertion it took to become the uh, on-stage live performer that he was, that was a price that he had to pay for that. And that was pain and suffering. Now, <clears throat> we're hearing all of these rumors about they killed Prince. Well, let's just look at what Prince did to Prince. Because that pain and suffering, I don't care if you Prince or Joe Willie or Nook Nook or whoever, <laughs> if you run into that pain situation, either you address the root cause of that pain or you start seeing Dr. Foster. And he saw Dr. Foster frequently enough that he ended up on medication that killed him eventually. So going forward, let's take into consideration when we uh, canonize people that first and foremost, let's separate what they do from who they are. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we are all challenged by the choices that we make. And that's my word for the day. Hey, Bobby, that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. He's like that a newscaster. A rant. That wasn't even a rant. That was like that was an compassion. editorial. <laughs> I do a little bit all. Bro. I like that, Bobby. <laughs> Old news on GNN <laughs> from Bobby. <laughs> Shit. Prince got to stop wearing them heels. <laughs> and then he'd still be if he had on some flats or something. <laughs> <laughs> he wore some flip flops. Right. He would have wore flip flops and Prince would be alive today. I love it, Bobby. Shit. <laughs> that was a negative belief right there. He sabotaged himself. That's genius, Bobby. He did on many levels. Let me just say this, though, in terms of self-sabotage people lose millions of dollars right because of you know not consulting others because they want to control everything that's one of the big things in business i've been coaching this one kid he wants to control every aspect of everything but he doesn't really want or he doesn't really have the skill set to do everything and a lot of times with business and money and limiting beliefs you need a real leader. A real leader is the type of person that not only knows his limits, but knows the limits mm. of the team mm. and knows how to get the best out of the team. Like, he would not put you in a position, right? A leader is like a point guard. Mm -hmm. Let's just do the bat basketball metaphor. Magic Johnson made bums look good because they didn't have to do much. He would throw a pass so precise that it would hit them in a place where they ain't got to dribble. All you got to do is just jump up and put it in there. You ain't got to show no other skill. Just jump and put it in, right? That's a great point guard because he'll put you in a position that makes you look good. Watch this. It works the same for radio. If I have Regan on the show, I go, Regan, what do you do? What do you talk about? What, what, what are you interested in? And then we formulate a show around what she talks about in her wheelhouse so she doesn't have to participate in a conversation that is in alignment with her skill set. That's leadership. They do the same thing in business. But all of that starts with a mindset. You can't be a great leader until you acknowledge the flaws within yourself. 
right? It, mm. Am I? Am I? Yep. Am I just spitballing? Spot reading? on. Speak on it. Uh, Have you had to save a person from themselves who are on the edge of destroying a business or destroy, destroying a relationship? If so, what were some of the things you had to deal with? Some of the idiosyncrasies that you had to work out in a person? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's massive, and I I think the craziest thing is a lot of the time they're unaware that they're actually doing it. You know, the, the behavior's showing up, but they, they haven't put two and two together and mm. gone, oh, I'm actually self-sabotaging. Mm. And it, it comes back really to to really recognizing it firstly and having an awareness of the behavior because if, if you're not aware of it, you can't change it. You, it's just like you're on autopilot. But so, how do you find that? Like, how do you recognize that? To me, that's the hardest shit. Right. To and, be able to go, I'm fucked up. Right. And this is where it's it's so powerful to have someone looking in because, mm. you know, everyone has their own blind spots. And I don't care if you're the best coach in the world or the best mentor or the most successful business person, you will always have your, your blind spots in your mind that you just won't be able to see. And, you know, I work with a coach and sometimes she says to me, look, do you realize you're doing this or saying this or not doing this? And I go... Oh man, that was so, why, why did I not right. see that, right? Right, right? But often you just need someone else looking in to give you that awareness. And the moment you have the awareness, if you're motivated to change, it's actually easy to shift it from there. Regan, Dr. G, Bobby, Kev, is there a way to teach perspective, Dr. G? Yeah, what's the saying? When the student's ready, the teacher appears. Oh, and, you and, read and, the Kabbalion. And, and, and when the student <laughs> isn't ready, it uh, doesn't matter what you teach. Um, Ooh. <laughs> uh, when I coach people now on getting through to other people, uh, I, I say whenever you're trying to get through to someone or sell someone or coach someone, what you want to rate yourself on after you have a conversation is how much SDU did you create in the other person? And SDU stands for self-discovered urgency. Say more. Meaning, uh, at the end of that conversation, when you're with someone you're trying to influence, uh, a 10 in self-discovered urgency means that at the end of the meeting they say, uh, how do you work? How do we, what do we do next going forward? How do you like to get paid? Uh, what's the next step? If they don't say that and they go, uh-huh, that's close to, that's interesting, you want to leave a brochure, you've blown it. Oh. So the key is how do you, in the conversation, help them discover an urgency for what you can help them with? So, wow. So, so the important thing is not what you tell them, but what you get them to tell you. And, and when I coach people, this I, I've, I've mentioned on the show here. That's good. Uh, 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 I think that there's, there's four things that I coach people to notice in the other person to get them to be more urgent. The four things are when they're talking about something, notice uh, hyperbole when they say awful or inflection, got to do something about this. Or if you're really liking this, adjectives and adverbs, you like this though. Adjective embellishes a noun that has emotional juice on it. Adverbs embellish a verb. Emotional, emotional juice. Emotional okay. juice. And so what happens is when, you, when that person <laughs> says, well, we got this awful situation, we better deal with it, and, uh, uh, and we really need to make it happen now, and they say, what do you think? You say, I can tell you what I think, but say more about uh, we really need to deal with this now. So mm -hmm. what you're always doing is you're drilling down further and further, and the more you drill, the more you're different from your competition. Hmm. Because if you answer a question without drilling, you're just like your competition, but the more you get people to open up by noticing those things, and what you'll see is they'll go into it. And if, and if you're talking one-to-one, -one, if someone says, well, this is awful, say more about the awful, they're going to start using their hands because the words aren't, well, it's really awful. And if we don't do something about it, it's going to get bad. Well, what do you mean really awful? And their hands are going to go like, it's a mess. But what's happening is you're getting them to open up to what's more urgent for them. Uh, and I think that's a key. And too often what everybody does is, well, have you thought about this? And it stays at an intellectual level that they're not open at all. Regan? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I absolutely agree. And I, I Say more about the agree. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> Doc is feeling himself today, right? Is right. Is this me? Okay, cool. Go ahead, Regan. And <laughs> it really is It is leadership as well. And it, it's a slight, a slight difference between 
telling someone what you believe is holding them back versus allowing them to discover it themselves as well. You know, I think that's a key thing and it's what I notice a lot, especially with coaches, you know, oh, well, you know, from what you've been telling me, here are all the things that are not right and here are all the things that you should be doing versus asking the right questions so that they actually have the aha moments themselves and break through to those discoveries. Because if you just tell someone, you know, you're self-sabotaging and this is how, they might consciously agree and go, I get it, but on a really deep level, they haven't actually, they haven't broken through to the change themselves. Mm. Yeah, Kev, and um, there's a, there's a difference between being excuse me. There's a difference between being self-aware and self-centered. And a lot of people who are self-centered, they they basically think about how things affect them. Narcissistic, and, yeah, narcissistic, narcissism and, and self-aware yeah. is how do I affect everyone else or other things? And um, ain't no pay in that. No. There's no thinking there, about there, other there, people. Fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Spiritual payment, baby. Say more. Say Spiritual more. Dollars. Say more. So you know, um, a lot of times for me, like when I'm when I was in relationships with uh, certain females, um, we'll be out, and uh, this thing annoyed me. Like when they we were by people, they wouldn't say excuse me when they walked past people. You know, they would bump people without saying anything, and I'm like, do you realize that you're in that person's way? But they're always aware when something is happening to them. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then also um, going on the, on the doctor's thing on compassion. Um, you know, I have to break down the word. Compassion means to suffer together. You know, come means together and passion means to suffer. Mm -hmm. the, the etymology. So um, to have compassion, and it's truly more like empathizing. If you're going to have compassion or to suffer with somebody, then... You're gonna have to give them uh, tools. You have to. It's, it's more about help. Whereas, as she, you were saying before, when you're saying, "Oh, that's okay," th that's more pity. It is. It's definitely more pity. So, um, you want to say something? Yeah. When you get through, I didn't. Uh, I, I wasn't about to cut you off. No. <laughs> he was just feeling sorry for you. Go on. No. <laughs> wow. Um, as it relates to coaching, uh, having coached uh, basketball and uh, little little soccer. Uh, it comes back to that fine line between knowing and sharing what you know from an experiential point of view and, and, uh, and sometimes what you've studied. It's a thin line between being able to coach somebody and then just really overwhelming them with what they perceive as coaching. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because I, I'm so aware of fear and how people are oftentimes unconsciously moved by fear motivation, which is unsustainable. But that's so many people, Bobby. That is a great point. Say more about that. Fear motivation uh, can drive you to incredible heights, and then when you get there, you're <laughs> stuck because you're out of energy, all right, because right. you use all of your power to just get there. Mm. And then when you got there, you're like, why did I get here? What, what, what was the real meaning of it? Mm. I've got money. I've got this car. But something inside of me says I missed the mark. And it was because I was afraid to fail. It's the difference between being afraid to fail and being consumed and obsessed with doing what's the right thing to do. Now, what's right for me may not necessarily be right for you. Right. In other words, because I'm not, uh, I know some people that are content with a very simple lifestyle. And other people are like, man, you could have so much more. And they done looked at it from the other side and said, I know people all the time that's got more than I got, and they but, got more problems than I do. But, Bobby, so, what about being afraid to disappoint? Afraid to disappoint mom? Well, afraid to disappoint pops? You're going to disappoint them, irregardless. Uh, <laughs> but I'm saying there are a lot of people, this is why I'm, we're trying to drill down, as Doc said, on this. There are a lot of people living for their parents. Well, you there are a lot of parents... Living for their kids. And everybody's messed up for that very reason because all you can really do at the end of the day is the best that you can do. And if you fall short, then that's on you. But if you, your expectation is, is what somebody else wants from you, then you're going to always be tore up, man. I've been through that. I've done my level best to be a good friend to people, and they're like, that wasn't it. I say, okay, well, I should just do the best that I can and let the chip fall where they may. So, Tell me about parents. Yeah, I was, yeah for sure. Yeah, because yeah, uh, uh, every you now and then. You just don't want me to go to break. It's cool. But I'm with you. Uh, quick tip. Um, if just you're, squeeze if, it in. Okay, if you're someone who's afraid <laughs> of disappointing your parents, and that can make, and that can really just shut you down, have this conversation with them. Ask your parents, uh, 
Are you more disappointed in me or are you more worried about my future? The reason you want to have that is because if, you, if all you're worried about is that you're, they're disappointed in you, when they're really worried about your future, you're going to have a whole, totally different reaction to that. And it'll, and it'll free a lot of parents to say, I'm not disappointed in you. I love you. You're my kid. I'm worried about your future because if you don't learn this now, you're probably not going to catch up. So you're not disappointed in me? You don't think I'm a bad son or daughter? No, not at all. I think you're not shit. Like that. If you don't do what I tell you to do, you're going to ruin your fucking life. Mm. Well, that was the white community, and that's the black community. That's why, there's some that's, parents that's out that's there, That's why right? you're so marginalized. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying there's some parents out there like that. Mm. They do. Oh, for sure. And if you're raised in that kind of construct... What are we to expect? Trouble. <laughs> no, this is ri- this is. Listen. Well, if you're raised like no. that, you'll go. You'll try to get even, but you won't get ahead. Mm. I That's like. Mm. There we go. We got something out of you finally. Mm. <laughs> Thank that you. Ma- that made sense. Thank that you. made sense. <laughs> we got to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to finish this conversation off. Man, it's it's rolling. Mm. The show's almost over. This is a dope show. Mm. Mindset. Bet your mind is better than you. No, I'm just, I'm sorry. We'll be back in two points. <laughs> Watching T Radio V, Radio in TV. In Chapter Ten, we talk about the difference between being embittered, embattled, or embittered. So. If you're embittered, of course you're holding on to things. You're resentful, you're resistant. If you're embattled, you're fighting. No, I don't, I don't accept that, I don't want that. But if you're open and you're allowing the process to unfold and flower within you and beyond you, you have an opportunity to become embittered. And chapter 10 goes into detail on how to stop being embittered how to stop looking for the win by being embattled, and how to evolve and expand to a space of embitterment. I mean, it's an, incre- it's an incredible work, man, and I'm excited about it. Hey, geeks, wake up. We've got big news. I'm not going to mumble this time. Geekscape, the long-running movie video game. Let me do one more. Hey Geeks, we got big news! Geekscape, your favorite show about movies, video games, comics, and TV is coming to T-Radio V Monday, October 6th. And it'll be on every Monday from then on, 7 p.m. Until the apocalypse happens, we're all eaten by zombies. Yo, what's up? This is your boy Kyle Mass, and you're checking out T-Radio V. T-Radio V. T-Radio V. Hello, T-Radio V. Love you guys. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. You gotta let this play. Everybody loves this record. Jack Herrera. Hey man, I love this music. Let me do this really quickly. 11 minutes ago, Timothy Woods sent us $25. I appreciate that. Continue to donate to Zoe Williams' new book, The Holographic Relationship. We only have 24 days left. We're nowhere near our goal. But if we cash mob, I know there's thousands of people listening right now. If everybody gave $5 right now, those are thousands of people that's listening. We'd be in a good space. I want to bring this book to you by this time next year, 2017. The Relationship 
the holographic relationship, a deeper look into the spiritual meaning of intimate relationships. Everybody has this concept about relationships. Let me give you this. When I talk to relationship specialists, uh, whether it be, you know, people like Steve Harvey or other people like that, you know, everybody really is a sociologist. They're not a relationship specialist. Because when you get down to it, they're talking about social game rules. You know, you should wait 90 days before you have sex. <laughs> that, that's a social game rule, right? Oh, or, you understand what I'm saying? Bullshit. It's gender roles and social game rules. Oh, the equity, you know, there should be equal exchange in a relationship. Reciprocity. That, you know, reciprocity comes from equity theory. Equity theory was created by an economist. If you come to the, to the relationship with a bowl and I come to the relationship with cereal, we're going to need somebody else to bring the milk. And a spoon. And then somebody else to bring <laughs> the spoon. Equity theory means what I come with, you come with. Mm -hmm. Or you come with something of equal value. That's not a relationship concept. That is an economy or an economist concept applied to relationships. And when people don't understand you live in America, which is a capitalist society, your social game rules are dominated by capitalism. Which is why 75% of all relationships or marriages end with money issues or money problems. The number one indicator for divorce in relation or in, in marriage or the number one indicator for poverty in marriage is divorce. The number one indicator for wealth in marriage or, or in relationship is marriage. So you'll make money if you get married because it's a business and you'll lose money when you get a divorce because it's a business. So people don't understand that they're interfacing, thinking they're interfacing with a person, but they're actually inter interfacing with an economic idea, a concept. And all I'm trying to do is say, we need to write a book that deals with the spiritual interaction. Why did I attract this person? Why did this person come into my life? What lesson does this person illuminate in me? It's not like they give me the lesson. They just illuminate the lesson that was already preexistent. Why do they trigger me in such a way? We need a book that deals with that, not a book that just deals with, you know, how you're supposed to be in society, the social game rule. And that's what this book is about, the holographic relationship. And we're trying to get it out there. And the only way we could get it done is the same way we did the last one. This one was crowdfunded. Everybody who, was in, who, who participated in the crowdfunding process of the relationship dismount are in the book. They got shot out. All 319 people are in the acknowledgement, right? So we do the same thing for the people who do this, but we're also giving away a bunch of stuff to get you motivated to bring this next phase into existence. Now that I've said that, me undies, for anybody who donates $50 or more will get free underwear. Anybody who buys a relationship dismount today from IamZoeWilliams.com will also get a pair of free draws. Now, back to the topic. Bobby had something to say. Get to it, Bobby! Man, while we was on a break, uh, earlier I had said that which you seek purely in your heart is also seeking you. Uh, the sister uh, that came with uh, Reagan, uh, she, she, she... Regan! Regan. Regan. <laughs> Regan. Regan. Get her name right, okay. pimp. Smack him, girl. Regan. Uh, <laughs> one of her associates uh, uh, interacted with me off air, and she said uh, she uh, just had some uh, interaction with Jim Brown, who I've been working with for 30 years, and she said... Are you the guy that he was talking about? And she was saying that there's going to be uh, some activities going on that I was unaware of that I had already thought about this morning, early this morning, about the family reunion. Because over the last 30 years, we've impacted people all over the world. And then she said, I was just up at his house not too long ago. You're the guy that he was talking about. So when you think about energy and, and, and your purest thoughts, just stand by and then don't sabotage it. Because sometimes you, you you want something, like they say, be careful what you ask for. Because mm -hmm. it'll plop right down in your lap and you'll be like, oh, I wasn't ready for it. You <laughs> know, one more time. Yeah. One more time. What you going to do? <laughs> 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 Just like that. <laughs> no, but let me, let me give a couple of tips, too. And I want to go around the table and I want everybody to give some tips. But I think a great tip for getting through challenges in relationships, and I haven't done a lot of it, but the little that I did do, it was very, very positive, the result. Read together. Read together. 
read some challenging shit, right? Stuff that y'all don't agree with. Read and study together. There should be, you know, I think um, this was left out in the relationship dismount, but I want to put it back in. There should be like a devotional where we can have, where we come together. You understand what I'm saying? Where we come together and we say, you know, we're going to talk about things that may be uncomfortable, but there's a no judgment zone. And we get to just really lay it out. And, and, and let me just say, when you're practicing that, forgiveness gets easier. The reason why forgiveness is difficult is because you don't put yourself in a position to train yourself to forgive. And when I say train, I mean like personal training. Yes, like that's Kumo right. D, that's right. Kumo D told me he was like, you got anger issues. You got to put yourselves in situations that, got, that will mm-hmm. trigger your anger yep. so, so you can, can learn how to deal with it. That's right. But if you're always avoiding it, just like in communication, in communication, one of the communication styles is avoidance. In avoidance communication style, you create conflict because you're avoiding it. So Mo was like, you got to put yourself in a situation that will trigger you. And then you have to observe yourself as you're triggered. Right? Yeah. So many people just get taken away with the trigger. And they just go with, oh, shit, I'm triggered. The Hulk. <laughs> ah! Right? <laughs> Sometimes you're going to be like, oh, I'm turning green. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. This is, I'm lime now. Lime color. I'm, I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pastel. All right, I'm now I'm back. But sometimes you have to do that. And I'm saying the same applies with these kind of conversations you have in your relationship. You know how many relationships are sexless? You know how many relations? I mean, and, and the sexless because there's an elephant in the room that ain't been dealt with. You know how many people living with an elephant? They live with him. He <laughs> at the crib. He part of the family. Like, change the channel, you know. The bar is chilling. Uh, <laughs> America's <laughs> Next Top Model is coming on. The elephant is talking? <laughs> but we're not talking. Mm. Yeah. We got, and, and, and we left that out of the relationship dismount. It may go into the holographic book. But there should be a no-judgment conversation zone where you read things that challenge you, and then you come together and discuss it. A woman should not be in a fucking book club with her friends, but not in one with her man. Mm. There should be a book club at the crib, mm. our book club with us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does that make any sense? Do you have any tips for confronting these limiting beliefs? Speak on it. Yeah, well, look, I think there's a really interesting point to be made in relationships with what you were saying, Zoe, around how they're so influenced now around society and right. everything that society expects. And when we look at relationships and the roles that we play or step into or aren't even aware of, And going even deeper with that, looking at the energetic stuff around polarity and looking at, you know, masculine energy and feminine energy and and how it's so like (laughs) skewed right now in society. And it's it's where society is pushing us, you know, naturally, like women are not as they were 100 or 200 or 500 years ago. You know, Mm -hmm. they're not sitting at home or summer, but the majority of them are like, I want a career and I want to go out and I want to make my own money and do amazing things in the world. And they're becoming more and more and more masculine. Oh, which, say more, say right, more. Go which there. then oh, flips the polarity because polarity is all about balance, right? Mm. It's like magnets, mm. equal and opposite. And so then the men become, <laughs> right? Their masculine literally starts dropping right. back until they're into this feminine zone. And all of a sudden Ooh. you have a completely depolarized. <laughs> yeah. Right? There you go, 27. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. And and you see people go out to dinner and they've been married for 30 years and they talk to each other, but there's nothing there, mm. right? There's no spark. There's no mm. nothing. And the woman's often in the boss seat. She's like, go here, do this. This is what you're having for dinner. And the guy's just, you know, he's not the leader anymore. Wow. And I mean, I can't speak for men, but I can speak for powerful women out there who might say, well, how do we handle that? Do we just not have careers? Are we just not leaders? Are we just not powerful? But I think I think there's some work to be done with females around really learning how to change your energy, right? And, and I I've, love it. Mm-hmm. I've had to work on this because you know I talk to clients and I'm like my team, I'm like go do this, do this, do this, and I come home with my man and I'm like let's go to dinner. He's like whoa, 
Don't talk Tone to me like down, that. Tone it down, Becky. <laughs> right? <laughs> Tone it down, Becky. Yeah. Oh, and I, I feel like there's really some yeah. work to be done in society of, of finding that balance and, oh, and learning how to step into being a king and being a queen and stepping into that role in a relationship because mm-hmm. it's pretty off from what I'm seeing. Wow. Mm. She smacked us with that. Bobby didn't die. <laughs> you know... That's really the, the the highlight of this whole mindset. Thing no, it for ain't me today. for me today. I'm speaking on. I'm, I'm speaking for you right now, Bob. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, <laughs> my slick ass. The, the changes that have occurred <laughs> just in the last 25 years, and it's become more pronounced in the last 10 years. It's got us so confused that it's hard for us to uh, delineate between the material aspect of who we are and the substantive part. In other words. You're a man whether you got a lot of money or no money. If you if that if that defines your manhood, then you know, I don't not know. Not not in America. For. Well well that's Get the, your broke ass out of here. Not in see, America. See, that's the thing about it, man. I done I done had it and I I've been without it, but when I walk in a room, you're not gonna define me by, you know, my bank account. If you do then I ain't gonna business around you anyway because I've been around successful people that treated me as though I was royalty. So I don't lower my yes, bar. Yes, yes. I'm not gonna lower my bar just because somebody else got a problem with that. And when it comes with relationships, what's interesting is you have to really go through some things to figure out what you really want out of another person. And then once you get there, you might have to spend some time adjusting to that before you mess it up. Because sometimes it's right there in front of you and it's too good to be true and you'll sabotage it. Mm-hmm. But what we're going through now with that push and pull about uh, who's going to wear the pants, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's an that's a effort in futility. Mm-hmm. Because if you're a man... The woman is attracted to you because of your manly qualities. The minute you start deferring to bitching her, bitching up. Oh Lord, mm-hmm. you're gonna get drop kicked. You're dead not in switching up, you yeah. bitching up, huh? <laughs> it's gonna get ugly, man. <laughs> it's gonna get Doc ugly. Doc and then Kev. Uh, we talked about this in another show. There's two kinds of processing uh, when you're listening to information. There are people that think, then do, and you have to drag them. Uh, kicking and screaming to feeling, and there are people who feel then do, and you have to drag them kicking and screaming to thinking. And and the problem is when you have those energies crossing each other, the person who feels then does, uh, when the when the other person's trying to solve it as a problem and they don't want a solution, they push back because it feels wrong. It feels like you're talking to them like they're a problem, and it feels wrong. And, and then when it feels wrong, they escalate, and then to the logical person or the person who does think, do, feel, they say, wait a minute, get a hold of yourself. Back down, and what's happening is there needs to be an under, a self-awareness that you're triggering the other person. You're, mm. tri- you're triggering uh, the, uh, the, the, the man in trying to, or, or the ma- masculine energy in trying to solve things is actually triggering the woman to become more emotional because she doesn't want a solution. She wants the chance to speak what's on her mind Ugh. and then she'll calm right. down Ugh. and she'll solve her own problems because she's not an idiot. Right. But wow. the problem is you're trying to keep, now keep a lid on it, keep a Sometimes lid on it. Sometimes they'll so solve like, their own problem. Yeah. <laughs> One minute. <laughs> mm. yeah, so, well, yeah, so there you go. Let's well, do this. And then, oh, Kev, go ahead. Say yours and then we got to go. Um, well, the tips that I had, it kind of goes along with both you and Dr. G. Um, one of my philosophies when I'm training people is make your, sh- your weakness your strength. So if someone comes to me and says that I hate push-ups, that's the very first thing we're doing. We're going to make that your strength. You can do five, and by the end of the month, you're going to be able to do 30. So, you know, just like Dr. G was saying, I was in a relationship that was pretty volatile, and because a lot of, because I'm an Aries, and so when people say stupid shit to me, it just pisses me off. So, <laughs> <laughs> so in this relationship, like, you know, we would argue all the time, and... I would just get really irate and because if she just wasn't logical. But then she said something to me one time that, had, that just made me think. She said, you know what, even if I'm not right, when you come at me that harshly, it just makes me shut down. So after that argument. Ooh, uh, I know what you're talking about, huh? Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I know about, exactly so. what you're talking about, yeah. <laughs> So after I'm that. I'm still <laughs> mad at her. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> we coming for you, nigga. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> but so after that, though, <laughs> um, <laughs> it started to make me realize and understand my, because I'm an Aries, so we just fire, we just go off. So it helped me to understand that side of me and to, and to calm it down and to, or to control it. Because control literally means to slow your role. That's the definition of it, to pull back your role. So in order to, you know, in order to be able to get through that relationship, that's what I had to do is understand that she's just trying to vent. Don't try to solve the problem. 
let her get off where she wanted to get off, and then we'll be able to handle yeah, it. Yeah, I gotta get this out quick. I remember a woman saying to a man in one of our sessions, she said, just because I'm emotional doesn't mean I'm irrational, and just because you're logical doesn't mean you're rational. It's just two different ways of processing <laughs> things. Well, thank you for that uh, divergent thought, <laughs> 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 Dr. G. <laughs> I love Doc. Listen, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, the final thoughts. We're at the end of the show. Just that Damn, point. it went like a rocket. Yeah, we'll be back in 2.2. I'm going to get in everybody's ass for the bullshit they was in here talking. <laughs> it's going down. You got You're watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. T Radio V. What did you play opposite Andy, Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played, I played, I played a news anchor and he played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is, is that to play my sister? You played his wife. Denise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you played his wife. Yeah. So you what's wrong with that, Eli? Yeah. Nothing's wrong with it. He's it got just, a great range as an actor. It, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. on T Radio V. Relationship Dismount is a book that I created. Um, it's a breakup and makeup book. But what's interesting about this particular book is I used uh, gymnastics to come up with a concept based off of sticking the landing. Everybody knows that um, in a gymnast's routine, one of the most important and crucial to the success of that routine is how they end it, how they finish it. and. Um, I decided to come up with the concept of relationship dismount uh, using this metaphor. Sticking the landing, how you end it is how you begin it moving forward. So we wanted to take that metaphor and really expound on it in the context of intimate relationships. <laughs> watching T Radio V Radio in TV Final thoughts, wrap it up. Self-sabotaging, limiting beliefs. We're all, to some degree, prisoners of this. But we all don't have to serve a life sentence. I just got back. Last week, I was in Kentucky. I did a lecture at Kentucky State University. And when I tell you those kids down there, let me just say much love to Maurice White. Uh, Maurice White is the guy who sets up all of the activities for the young guys and girls down there. Brilliant kids, man. Brilliant kids, right? Young, minds open, thirsty, ready to do it. And when I went down there to talk to them about manhood, relationship, life in America, in Kentucky, something real came out. I used Marvel Comics to drive my point home, right? Einstein stumbled on some shit, but that paper in 1905, the theory of relativity, right? Which opened the door to quantum mechanics, right? Einstein, as brilliant as he was, had a limiting belief. He wouldn't, do, he wouldn't look at the math. The math he spurred, he spurred a revolution with, you know, theory of relativity. So younger guys come along and they took what he did as a foundation 
and started going deeper. Quantum mechanics. He, for a long time, he wouldn't even look at the math. Math is the highest language, the most succinct and profound language human beings have on planet Earth. Math. Third, fourth dimensional mathematics. He wouldn't look at it because he was stuck in what he was doing. Relativity theory, as well as Newtonian physics. But now, as quantum mechanics has evolved, scientists all over the world understand one thing. This is a thought universe. The universe we live in is a thought universe. Now they have to factor in consciousness in their mathematical equations. There are no eyes, eyeballs, watching electrons pass through the double slit experiment, but they have instruments of measurement. And the electron, which became an electron when it became aware that there was an instrument there placed there by us to observe it. Oh, y'all put something in here, and I know you're looking at me, so I'm going to look back at you. Krishnamurti, the observer is the observed. Rumi, what is seeking, what you're seeking is also seeking you. Krishnamurti, relationship as a mirror. Oh, shit. It's really going down in this universe. So you mean to tell me you get to live happily ever after without challenging the internal shit within you? You expect to attract some real fly shit that's going to change your life for the better without acknowledging what is in you that challenges you? Listen, listen a challenge is just an offer. It's like, it's like going to <laughs> KFC. You got a coupon. A challenge is an offer, a coupon. <laughs> Redeem that challenge and grow up. You don't get to grow up without redeeming your inner challenges. People don't understand that. So I told these young kids, I said, we're going to use Green Lantern. Yeah. Green Lantern. <laughs> Hal Jordan. What's the Negro Lantern call? I like him better. What's the Black Lantern call? John somebody, John whoop ass. We're gonna say John whoop ass for the black Green Lantern. <laughs> what is the basis of Green Lantern? Well, there's an energy force in the universe that's green. Mm -hmm. They call it the green flame called will. <laughs> will, willpower, mm -hmm. the power of will. When they get the new lanterns into the core, they get trained by Kilowog in the gang, different aliens on how to make their mental constructs stronger. <laughs> you can, anything you think of, you can create through the Green Lantern ring. <laughs> oh, that's the law of attraction. That is your mind creating a construct. Now, the stronger you get, the stronger your constructs are, the stronger your mind gets. So what is the natural opposite to Green Lantern? The yellow core. The Green Lantern has a natural enemy, the yellow core. Yellow is fear, led by Sinestro. Yep. <laughs> Sinestro, Latin word for left-handed. You know, for the Catholics, that was a very evil thing to be left-handed. So the bad guy is the left-hand dude named Sinestro. In the, in the fear core. So many people have joined the fear core. Fear makes their decisions. In the relationship dismount, I don't say just fear alone. Fear got a cousin named Ego. They come together and form Figo. Fear <laughs> and Ego. Mm, Figo. Making decisions <laughs> for you. You're afraid to piss your mama off. You're afraid to piss your daddy off. I've already said, if you... I see you, pimp! <laughs> I, 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 I always say, if you haven't had an original thought that didn't come from mom and dad... You can't call yourself an adult yet. You've got to challenge them. I'm open to my kid. Challenge me, mm -hmm. children. I'm not always right. Take what I'm working on to its fruition point. You can do that, but it can't do it without your original idea too. Do you understand? These limiting and negative beliefs are not something to be run from. They're something to be 
They got you got to look at them like Jehovah Witnesses after you've gone to seminary school. Come on in here. Let's have this conversation. <laughs> I didn't studied so much religion. I, when they come to the door, I say, come on in. They be like, really? <laughs> yes, I'm about to bust your fucking ass. You didn't know. You think you about to convert me. I'm about to convert you. <laughs> but that's the whole point. We, we run from our problems. We run from these negative mm. aspects of ourselves, and we think we're going to run into happiness. Mm. It's impossible. You can't be happy until you're happy with you. Mm. You can't be happy with you until you reconcile you. Mm. You're a problem from the jump. <laughs> Krishnamurti said, inside every problem, there's the inherent solution waiting to unravel. The relationship ain't going to unravel it for you. It's just going to show it to you. Mm. Then you're going to get mad and leave and go somewhere else as if the problem isn't still there. I'm Zoe Williams. That's my final thought. We got work to do. This was a great show. I appreciate everybody for participating. Around the table, let's get everybody's information. Where can they find you? Bobby G? On Twitter at Glanton Smith, www.realmendonplay.com. And Zoe, you got two more weeks on suspension. <laughs> Bobby, go to hell and stay there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin! <laughs> Three, uh, you guys can get at me at 3bbootcamp.com or the YouTube channel Real Nagas or Real Nagas at gmail.com. Excellent. Dr. G? At Mark Goulston, M-A-R-K-G-O-U-L-S-T-O-N. Go to Audible Deal of the Day for one day only, Talking to Crazy, the Audible book that's nominated for three awards. It is two ninety five just for today instead of twenty. Mm. Excellent, excellent. Regan. All Hillier. platforms. That's right. All <laughs> platforms at Regan Hillier. R E G A N H I L L Y E R. Reganhillier dot com as well. I love it. And Zoe Williams. I am ZoeWilliams.com. Please get a copy of the Relationship Dismount, How to Stick the Landing When Exiting a Toxic Relationship. If you get it today from me today, I mail it out tomorrow, but you also get a free pair of draws and the <laughs> Hey, man, me undies supporting the whole movement. And by the way, the relation, the holographic relationship, go to Indiegogo right now. We had one other donation. I want to give those people props. We had six donations during the show. Six in, in two hours is not good enough, but I appreciate everybody. Michael Bowie, 22 minutes ago, dropped $25. We appreciate it. That brings our total to 162 backers. We've only got 25 days left. I need you guys to make a move. Cash mob today. Appreciate you all. We'll be back next week with another heater. Holla, so what morning? We out. Peace. You are watching T-Radio V, Radio NTV.